Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, so I hope you're remembering to, uh, you know, take some notes about these things and, uh, you know, d things that are difficult to remember. For example, um, after you have made choices and you have saved that thing, um, there was the properties window. Make sure you always go to the properties window and tell it how often you want to update stuff. And if you forget to do that, you can always come up here to the uh, connections tab and look in here and go to the properties of one of them, like the one we just did was Q1 sales. Look at the properties in there, and that's the part about how often do I want it to refresh and all that kind of stuff. So you can still get there even if you miss it during the wizard. It's not etched in stone. You can come and uh, change those things by hand if you wish. All right, time to talk about pivot tables. Now, uh, pivot tables are very, very good at analyzing data. For example, very often we're handed data, sometimes from outside sources like this, and it's, to, and it's hard to find any real, um, any real, um, and, and it's hard to find any real trends in the data because there's just so much of it there. So um, I'm going to step back into one of our practice files that we were working on earlier. So I'm going to go to my home tab and I'm going to say I want to go reopen the one named uh, Dan's Excel Day 2 work file. So I'm going to go peek in there again. So um, I've got a sheet here named Pivot Table, and it's got some information about uh, selling ice cream treats. And I've got another one named Subtotals, and this one's about selling wine. Mm, I think I feel like selling wine this time. Uh, besides, this particular table is pretty huge, the data set here. If I use my trick about using Control and the down arrow, I discover there's about 300 rows in here. So. Um, it's a fairly big data set, and it's got lots of repeating data. Maybe I'll use my control home trick to get to the upper left-hand corner here. So I've got sales reps. We've got a field for state, month, the type of stuff we're selling. You see we're selling red and white wine here. Uh, the states look a little funny because they're in uh, Australia. So we've got New South Wales and Victoria and so forth. So we've got repeating data under group, we've got repeating data under type, we've got repeating data under part, we've got lots of numeric data to total up or average or find maximums, minimums, all kinds of things you can do in pivot tables. Um, and so this thing, um, as we noted, it's got about 300 rows to it. So we're going to look at ways that we can gather things. Uh, now, there are functions called uh, dsum and sum if, very similar to each other. What they do is basically filter and total things at the same time. But that's only good for like one or two things that you're looking for. If you really want to gather information and do filtering and totaling at the same time, you've got subtotals command, and then you've got pivot tables. Subtotals command, you've got to do a bunch of stuff like sorting by the things you want to subtotal by. Pivot tables, you don't have to go through all that setup stuff. They're really easy to set up. And they're really easy to manipulate. So um, that's why pivot tables are very popular in the database world. And uh, so let's get started. Let's see what a pivot table can do for this data, for example. So right now I'm in a sheet named subtotals. And um, I'm going to rename it. So I'm going to right-click on its tab down here at the bottom. I'm going to right-click on uh, the tab. I'm going to say rename that. And I'm going to call it uh, wine sales. And then to take this data set and make a pivot table from it, there's a couple of ways to get started at it, but I'm going to go to the Insert tab. By the way, I need to click in the data set someplace. You don't want to start out here. Um, it takes an extra step that you don't really need. So I'm going to click anywhere in the contiguous data set here. Then I'm going to go to the Insert tab, and I've got choices about Table and Pivot Table. Well, so far I'm going to choose Pivot Table. Although I'll tell you, there is actually an advantage to choosing table first, but I'll come back and talk about that one later when we see what the drawback would be to not starting as table. So I apologize for kind of telling you about that inside out, but um, it'll make more sense when we see it happen. So, so far I'm just going to do pivot table. Here I go, clicking on pivot table. And it says, all right, where is the data? And because I had you click on a cell inside the contiguous range, you can see the flashing marquee around the outside here. If you had started outside here, then you'd have to tell it, oh, okay, the data is in here that goes from this corner to this corner. So it's just helpful to have started inside the uh, general range of cells there. So it figures out where the data is, and it's offering to create this pivot table on a new worksheet. 
and I thoroughly recommend that. So I don't make any changes in this window. I just choose, okay. So I've been working in a data sheet named Wine Sales. That's my, um, that's my data set for this pivot table. And when I click on OK and it inserts this new worksheet, notice that it inserts the worksheet to the left of your data set sheet. So I was working on Wine Sales Sheet, then it puts my new pivot table just to the left of that. And on the right hand side, I have all the field names that had been at the top of my data set. So in the Wine Sales data sheet, I see rep and say, uh, state and month. So in the top, uh, in my header row of my data set, I see rep and state and month and type. And when I go to the pivot table skeleton here, I see rep and state and month and type. So that's where it got this information from. And then on the left side, I see little boxes that say I can drop stuff there. There's actually four of them. And in the bottom right-hand corner, here's a new look to 2007. Those of you who are veterans of uh, creating pivot tables in the past, you're used to this look over here at the left-hand side, but these quadrants, they call them down here in the bottom right-hand corner, those are going to be new to you. But it turns out the quadrants are just a way to do the same stuff as drop data items here. So I've got a thing that says column labels. i got one that says report filter row labels and summary values. Um, we'll kind of see how these things interact. So in my original data set, when I look at the wine sales table, I've got this sales rep Roland Wallquest. So some of his sales are up here at the top, then a few of them down here around rows 27, 28, and a few, of them, a few more of them down in there. Remember what we're starting with, 300 individual sales. Pretty hard to see any trends, like who's selling the most or any of that kind of stuff just yet. But boy, it's going to happen pretty quickly here. So um, so I'm going to my skeleton, and I'm going to say, all right, for the sales rep, I would like one individual row in my pivot table for each sales rep. Even though each of those sales reps might be in there 50 different sales, what I want to see in my nice organiz organization uh, pivot table is, um, is one row for each sales rep. So there's a couple of ways I can do that. Here's the first one. I'm going to grab the word rep and drag it to the left. And I see a little thing about drop row fields here, and that's actually where I'm going to drop it. And lo and behold, now suddenly alphabetized by the first letter, in this case, first letter of the first name, um, here's all my sales reps. So even though, um, you know, Dave Robertson is in there over and over again, uh, and Roland Walquist was in there over and over again, um, they've got one individual row for each of my sales reps. Really easy, really nice organization. Uh, so now I see another thing about drop column fields here. By the way, as I'm looking over at the right-hand side in the quadrants, look what happened in the row label section. Suddenly it says rep there. Now I didn't drag it there, but I could have. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do for the next one. So for the next one, I want to talk about uh, my type of wine, which turns out to be really simple, red or white. So I would like one column for each of those, red and white. So I could grab the type field and drag it and drop it where it says drop column fields here. Or, this time I'm going to go the other way, I'm going to use the quadrant. So I'm going to grab the field called type, and this time I'm dragging it down here where it says column labels, in the column labels quadrant. And when I let it go down there, now it says type down there, and then look what happened over at the left-hand side in my pivot table. It says red and white, as though I had dragged it and dropped it up to that part that said drop column fields here. So those two are just interactive. They're just two different ways to do the same thing. And then I got another box here that says uh, drop data items here. And that will be the same as the uh, Greek letter sigma down here in the bottom right-hand corner quadrant, summary values. So I can put stuff either of those places. And usually what you want to put there are your numeric fields. If you take a text field like group or month and you drop it in there, it will count them. Um, usually you want to like total things up or find maximums and minimums and standard deviations and all those kind of things. Um, for those, you want to put numeric fields either in the part that says drop data items here or in the summary values quadrant. And you can do more than one of these, but I'm starting out simple. So I'm going to say I want to total up the sales. So I'm going to grab the sales numeric field, and I'm going to drop that down there in the summary values, which would be the same as dragging it over where it says drop data items here, and I let go, and it appears both of those places. And here's my first pivot table. And it's got all kinds of automatic totals here. Uh, for Bob Oatley, maybe he sold red wine in 18 different sales, but it totals up to $861 worth of sales. 
for red wine for Bob Oatley. And this much for white wine for Bob Oatley, and this much grand total for Bob Oatley. There's all of Bob Oatley's sales. And also at the bottom of each column, the column called red, I see a grand total for all the red sold by all the salespeople. And a grand total for the white, and a grand total for the grand totals. Now just how much fun can one person have? Well, it's time for me to share the fun with you. So you're going to your subtotal sheet. You're going to click anywhere in the big range of cells. You're going to go to the Insert tab. You're going to say you want to insert a pivot table. It tells you that it found the data range, and you choose you want it on a new worksheet. That is, you change nothing in this first window. And it creates your, the skeleton of your pivot table. Now you can see in this case it's looking a little bit different than it did the first time I did it. Let me just show you what happens if this happens to you. I'm going to go up to my Options tab under Pivot Table Tools. I've got the Word Options over here. I'm going to click on that, and it opens a dialog window. I'm going to click the tab for Display right here in the middle of the tabs, and it's called the Classic Pivot Table Layout, including dragging and dropping fields. I checkmark that. I choose OK. So here's the skeleton the way it was the way we saw it last time. And that's carried over from 2003. And so then I drag stuff in here. I drag the rep to the rows. I drag the type, red or white, up to the columns. I drag the sales into the drop dead items fields here. And that was my first pivot table. Putting the video on pause, give that a shot.